Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Monday, August 5th, and we have a lot to get to. Busy week ahead as I will be leaving for Florida late Thursday night, getting there on the red eye, landing early Friday morning. So going to be tied up all of Friday and uh, spending a few days at the Hard Rock there in Tampa, see if we could do a little bit of damage before coming back. I'll be back next Monday. Contenders Theory starts on Tuesday. So we got a lot of action ahead. College football, NFL preseason starting up, NFL regular season starting up. I've sent out a handful of season win totals. More are coming. Sent out a handful of preseason uh, bets already. Sent out college football week one bets already. Don't forget, we finished number one in profit in NFL and college football combined in 2023. And more importantly, we're starting to heat up exactly what we expected. And that's just what happens. Just like losing betters that are on hot streaks regress towards the mean, winning betters that are on cold streaks will progress towards the mean. And that's exactly what's happening. Unfortunately, most recreational betters buy information at the long, wrong time, meaning they jump on hot streaks, which just are not sustainable and they jump off cold streaks, even if it's a long-term winning better, when that's the time you expect them to progress towards the mean. How did we do over the last three days? Well, we picked up 22 plus units with an over 17% return on investment. Now that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. Just like a negative 17% ROI isn't. I always stress that. Can never get too high, can never get too low. Numbers do not lie. When you zoom out, the truth is there. When in doubt, zoom out. It's exactly what we do. When we zoom out, what do we see? Increased starting capital by 80% in 2023. When we zoom out a little further, what do we see? We turned the profit eight of the last nine years. Now, over a short term, small sample size, there's a lot of randomness involved. Anything could happen. In fact, I've gotten my ass kicked over the last, what, two plus months. I've gotten my ass kicked, and that's going to happen. But I've managed my risk correctly. We never get too high. We never get too low. We never chase. We treat it like a market. We treat it like a business. It pays us like a business. And that's why we continue to grind. So all of you that have jumped on board of late, again, just stay the course. When we're crushing and on fire, don't get too excited. Don't overbet our edge. And when we're having a hard time, don't chase. And once again, don't ever bet overbet that edge. Follow the blueprint. We're working with a 20% risk of ruin where with it's a math. Simply put, we will double our bankroll a little better than eight out of 10 times. We will lose it a little less than two out of 10 times. That's a very comfortable position to be in. In fact, it's allowed us to profit eight of the last nine years without having to replenish our bankroll, which is huge. But if you overbet, if when we were losing, you started betting more than you should have, you're not going to be around to get profit when it turns. Um, I'll keep pushing that. I'll keep wasting time and energy on the money management side because until you learn to manage risk efficiently, the picks just will not matter. They become irrelevant. And I've told my story over and over and over again how I managed to lose multiple bankrolls with the sharpest information on the planet because I didn't know how to bet size the information. That's what took a long time for me to handle and more importantly, handle the swings that come even when you're a profitable and plus CV better. You got to be able to handle those swings. And over the last two months, if you got wiped out, then you got to go back to the drawing board. You need some accountability. And if you're ready to do it the right way, let's partner up and do some damage because I think these next uh, couple months and more importantly next 365 we're gonna do what we always do baby you see the smile you know what's happening all right now like i said i gave out a lot of football action uh slow day in baseball i'm gonna tell you what we got so far only one bet for the betting syndicates um they got down the groups that i work with on boston at plus money plus 115 or better should be good there um on the boston red sox over kansas city i think it's a good spot for boston uh, Kansas City a little bit overvalued and more importantly playing a little bit above their head meaning based on run scored runs allowed just got a little more wins than they should now obviously that's not going to regress in short term it happens in the long term but we do look to fade teams that have gotten lucky in the first half 
And I think Kansas City is one of those teams that have gotten a little bit lucky. Uh, so it's a spot we're going to fade them. I like the pitching matchup too, especially when you factor in a little recency bias. So let's take the plus 115 or better on Boston. Also, one of the traders that I share information with just hit me up with the over in that same game. He went over nine and a half in Boston, Kansas City. Now it's sitting at over 10 right now. Over under is 10. I have to decide whether I'm going to uh, piggyback it and uh, use it with my subscribers. Still got to vet it, but just sharing that with you guys as well, that they did go over nine and a half. Now it's sitting at 10, which is one of those halves that I usually would take if I agree. Because worst case scenario is if they hit their over nine and a half, the worst I could do is push. Now, if they went over 10 and it was sitting at 10 and a half, now I have a, a serious question that I need to answer. I got to feel a lot stronger about the pick because if it lands if they, they could push and I lose, I never want to be in that position. I want to be in a position where if they lose, if they win, the worst I can do is push. Or if they win, I win. That's the positions you want to be in. Um, and it takes a while to figure out when there's still EV there. Don't worry, a lot of touchy, a lot of feely. So we'll go with Boston. We'll go with Boston as today's free pick. Like I said, I sent out, I believe, uh, one more preseason football. Let me let you know what we have in uh, so far for this week, I believe I have one, two, three. I got three preseason uh, sides and totals. I've got two college football week one sides. I've got a handful of college football season win totals. We got an NFL season win total. Uh, I got two tennis. Let me give you the two tennis ATP. It's in Washington. The men's side. We took uh Thomas Mackick, Thomas Mackick, uh, about minus 160, 160 or so favorite. And we also took Thomas Martin Echeverry, Echeverry over Nicholas Jerry. That's Thomas Martin Echeverry at about minus 130, good up until about minus 140 range on Echeverry. So we took Echeverry and we took Thomas Mackick in tennis. Um, what else do we have? Penel. We got women's boxing. I don't know. I think that that one already was put in. So I don't even know if you guys can get down on that. So um, that's good. I think I gave Wyoming yesterday. We put at the on the buy at plus seven, minus 120. Uh, comfortable up the half a point from six and a half to seven. It was plus six and a half. We bought the half a point. It's good up until minus 124. If they're charging 125, which a lot do for the half a point on the seven, you don't buy it. Because you're ultimately, if you're laying minus seven, if you're getting plus seven, minus 125, you're getting worse than plus six and a half, minus 110. Even though it looks like you're getting plus seven, you're not. That VIG becomes the great equalizer. Remember, I talk about that a lot. The VIG, just like the point spread, becomes the great equalizer when betting money lines. So be very cautious with that. Um, and when you're buying half a points, if you're paying too much VIG, you're not getting the number that it appears. Because of the VIG, you're actually getting an even worse number. So plus seven is good up to 124. If they're charging 125. I just take the plus six and a half at minus 110. Um, I'm sure a lot of them NFL bets have already um, lines have definitely moved. We're going to move lines, especially in preseason. Forget about it. And a lot of these uh, week one. That's why be very cautious if you don't get down on the week one college football. Before week one comes, and if you don't get down on week one NFL before that week one arrives, be very cautious because you got to remember those lines have been up for weeks, if not months. The value has been extracted. Those are as efficient as you're going to get. The best you can hope for is that then on game day or that last few days leading it up to the game, that there's some type of narrative um, that forces the market to then become inefficient. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely efficient. Because they've had months to finagle and form those lines into where they're strongest, or whether you take side A or side B, if you're laying 11 to 10, you really don't have an edge and you're hoping to be the product of good luck. Now, let's get to some of these questions and comments and uh, make sure you smash that like button. Again, I don't mean it's not like a um, threat, but I, I'm hoping to keep this going, but I'm seeing the viewership starting to drop. I was hoping that to, to be able to do this at pretty much every day during football season because there is 
pretty much football games every day. And it would give me an opportunity more to educate, to share a lot of the information and knowledge that I've acquired through the experience that I've had moving for a lot of these groups and betting myself. Um, Baseball is a little bit different. Um, Most of the stuff that we're actually using is proprietary. So it's not like anything I'm really going to explain on, on uh, applying uh, unlike football where there are just certain misconceptions that are out there that I would like to point uh, better straight. So hopefully when football does roll around, there is more interest for a daily show where we go over a little bit of gold, answer some questions and uh, read off some comments and even talk about a little bit money management. So when betters are actually plus EV and have access or have access to winning information that they're able to use it, and not make the mistakes I did in the past and actually are able to go when I finally learned how to use it. I went from betting 100 to 500 to betting 1000 to 5,000 in only a couple of years. That's a 10 X, um, on bankroll in not that long, not that long of time. Once you realize that all I have to do is the right things, not any errors and, uh, fire volume. Things will work out. Anyway, let's get to some of these questions and see what we can do. Kill Bill. Sorry, Yanni, but do you know how your viewers feel when you upload after the picks are off the board? Now, I'm sure it's not a good feeling. I don't have control over that, my man. Like I do this as when I can, and then it's sent into the to wager talk. And when they put it out, they put it out. I'm sure they don't know when my game that what game I gave out or when it goes off or anything like that. And the truth is, I don't even look at the schedule. Like, I'm just like, this isn't planned. It's not a show. It's, I'm working. I turn this on, share what info I can, get it to Wager Talk. And then if they could get it to you guys, um, again, all the plays I release, they're time stamped at Wager Talk. It's not like we're giving out stuff after the game's over. If it's a subscriber play, they already got it. I know that's not what you're saying. And I know it's, it's awful getting a pick, especially if it wins. And you're like, gee, well, that does me no good. Um, but again, I, I, you know, I do them when I can, like right now it's 10 AM, uh, Pacific time. There's been no early games. I wish I could have done it earlier, but I've been trading. Have you seen the stock market today? Have you seen crypto over the last 24 hours? This is a trader's paradise. I've been doing nothing but buying and selling, buying and selling, buying. I think I've made about 22 trades since about with the overnights and the crypto. It's about four in the morning, three 30. Yeah, this is on no sleep. This is the opportunities you wait for as a trader that comes maybe a couple times a year. Sometimes a whole year it doesn't happen. Like we'll go a year or two where it doesn't happen. Um, and then you get the big drop like COVID. Um, this was huge. I think over $2 trillion stock market lost. I don't think people are realizing what's happening. If you look around the globe on the economy right now, whew, they had to halt trading in Korea, Japan, the Nikkei. Forget about it. The cracks not only have shown, it's starting to get where we were talking about. Again, I told you guys, I wish I was wrong. I wish I was wrong. And when Bitcoin was at 70,000 and I shorted it, I told you guys, because I, I stack in cold storage, I hope I'm wrong. Like I'm hedging against myself and I'm hoping I'm wrong. But charts don't lie, man. This is None of the charts aren't my opinion. And of course, you're going to have a bounce. Bitcoin went to below 50 this morning. You got to buy below 50. It's a buy against you. You put it up against the U.S. dollar risk, whether holding U.S. dollars or holding Bitcoin. Once it drops below 50, you've got to convert those dollars into, into BTC. You know you're going to get at least 10% bounce on that within the 24-hour period. It's not going to just go. Nothing goes straight down in a straight line. Nothing goes up in a straight line. Again, we get emotional at these times and uh, we start doing the wrong things nine times out of 10 when we're emotional. We make bad choices. And that's what I've been seeing all day. Bitcoin's going to bounce back. It's going to come back up. Don't, don't be surprised. It gets back to 60,000. It's definitely going to crack over 55 today. It's already forming that in the hourly. You look at the, the hour chart right now. It's sitting at 53,000. It's going to 55. Just looking at this hour chart. Bitcoin's going up. So I bought some more 49. Once I saw below 5.0, I knew the dollar risk. And, and, and do I expect it to drop more? Absolutely. 100%. I think we're getting the 40. I do. I do. 30 is on the table. 30 is still on the table. Um, but I do think highly probable is 40 more than 30. 
th- things would really have to get bad to get back to 30. Um, but 40 is there. 40 is right around the corner. Let me look, actually. Oh, yeah. And that's the scene. Of, we're going to 42. We're going to 42. And then it breaking down. If it gets down, once it breaks 42, if it doesn't, things don't turn at that 42, $42,000 range, then we're breaking down that 36 is next. The next support is until like 36. So yeah, Bitcoin's got a lot of falling still to go. I, I still didn't get out of my biddy. You know, I, I told you guys, I put in like 10, 20,000 when it was at 60,000, bet more at 65, put more at 70,000. I was betting against it. I didn't think we were going to have a new all-time high with Bitcoin. Um, Not yet. And uh, I was being made fun of. I was being bashed. I was the only guy going short when everybody was making money hand over fist, hand over fist. Well, I hope they cashed out. I hope they weren't in paper gains because I told you, I watched myself become a millionaire four or five times over with my crypto holdings in 2021 and then not become a millionaire. Millionaire, not millionaire. Millionaire, not millionaire. Millionaire. Five or six times over. And I said, that's never going to happen to me again. I will never leave my gains on the table. I don't care if I miss out on that extra 10, 20, 40, 60% that I would have had. I'm locking in my gains. I'm locking in my gains. But this conviction I have on how low Bitcoin's going, I'm not getting out of Biddy yet. Hell no. Hell no. What did we get in the Biddy? Let's look at Biddy. What was that Biddy price we got in? If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. $6.70, I think. I think it was six or seven dollars at the most. Seven at the most. What did it get to today? 950. 950. What's that? 30%? 30, 40% gain? I'll take it. I'll take it. We're not done. We're not done. No, 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 no. We're not done. I didn't put up that 50, 40, 50 dimes for nothing. We're not doing that just for 20, 30, 40%. We're going to double up that 40, 50 dimes. We're doubling that up. That's what's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. The cracks are showing. Come on. Charts don't lie. Thank God I don't have an opinion, man. I'd be so biased. I'd be so biased all over the board. I just follow the charts just like with sports. Thank God I don't follow this stuff. If I watch the games, oh my God, I'd have an opinion. This team's better. That team's better. Oh, they're going to win. Thank God I just look at the charts. All right, I don't have any. All right, I'll pick a question. Random, random. All right, I'll tell you. Someone wants to know when they should buy uranium. They've been holding, 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 holding. It bounced today. It got to that 3683. Remember, if if you were with me for a while. I went back to that March 2020 trend line. Remember, that was the COVID dump, the COVID dump. I went back to the COVID dump. We have a trend line that's still live. That's a strong trend line going back four years, okay? We almost hit it this morning. We got as low as 36.97, and my trend line would have been about like 36.25. I my I have a buy order at that trend line. It didn't trigger though. It didn't trigger. Um, but I I would I would not fear picking up uranium down around here. Now, obviously, there's a fib level. The next fib level is exactly at. Let me tell you. Is down around next fib level is down around thirty two dollars. Now will it get down to thirty two? I don't know, man. If it does, you got to back up the truck. But right now, anything, yeah, anything on the, that that thirty nine range, I would start buying. I would start nibbling, 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 nibbling. If you want a uranium position, if you want a position on uranium, I would start nibbling from thirty nine for sure, for sure. Tesla, wait. 
Someone's asking about Tesla. Tesla, wait. Tesla, wait. I have a buy on Tesla at 171.30. I think the gap. One, I, my buy is at 171, 171.34. So for whatever, I didn't put a note there. I'll check. But I had a buy on Tesla at 171. I got down to 181, so $10 shy. So we're waiting on Tesla. Tesla's going to be one of those long-time holds. I want to hold for long, for, for good, for good, for good. What happened was I had bought Tesla at like $100 back in January 2023, I think. I bought it around that $110 range. And shit, when it got up to that 250 I got out of it. I mean, I should have got out of it a lot sooner, but um, I ended up making more because I held it. Because I was thinking of holding Tesla forever. It was one of those I was going to hold forever. But I just don't think the economy just isn't right for that yet. So. Like I said, Lee, we're leading into that 19th. You're starting to see the formation of chaos around the world and all that craziness. Anyway, I don't want to hold you guys up anymore. Enjoy the games. Do some damage. Let's see those comments tomorrow. Can't wait. Guys, have a good one. Love you. Do some damage. I'm done.